<laughs> What's going on, guys? Seca Funk. Um, no, and of course, as you can see, Hammond. Um, let me give him a snack. Check out these nasty looking things. These are like yams. From the natural food store. He loves these. Um, come here, Hammond. Here. Come here. Come around here. I normally make him work for these, but to leave me alone. Come here, Ham. Say say hello. Come. Oh. Look. Say hello. Say hi. Say hi to everybody here. Go lay down. Ah, ah, ah. Go lay down. So, everybody. Um, I this is a very special post, man. I wanted to go ahead and post, um, make a quick post about my uh cubicle or cube cubicle label. Um, as you guys saw. Yesterday, um, Derek opened up one from a package I sent him, man. Um, that was like an extra one that I had uh, when I was buying them. And so I was like, man, I know he would dig this. And Derek, I'm so glad that you like them. You're more than welcome, as always. Um, <laughs> man, I, I don't know. Sometimes, like like really in the VC, sometimes it feels like that old, that old saying is true. It is better to give than to receive. Especially when someone as gracious as Derek is making a video like that, thanking you, me, um, and the missus. The, my, oh, I'm sorry. Not me and the missus. Memphis Vinyl Gem and the missus, my man. Um, but I wanted to make an in-depth um, uh, video about the label Sagittarius, a star, um, and uh, Cubicle. Now, both of them are started by the same guy. Um, Emmanuel Pinotti, Pinotti, an Italian cat, um, started Cubicu or Cubicu. Um, God, I want to say 2006, and they made 100 plus releases. Since then, I think last year or maybe in 2010, he uh, discontinued the Cubicu label. Um, there's no more releases. Um, normally on that label, there were like maybe 130, sometimes less, sometimes more releases of each project. But let me tell you about Emmanuel and his label. Basically, he gets a hold of old work that people have, uh, that artists have done, musicians have done, um, and he releases them if he feels that they're good enough to release. Um, it starts out and still is completely um, subscribe based. As far as getting a hold of the releases, um, um, you basically have to be on his email list, which is not hard to get on, but I'll go into depth about that a little bit later. Um, but basically, uh, the gift outside of the regular releases uh, is, am I getting lag? Lag? Hammond's almost finished his snack. It looks like I'm getting a little bit of the lag, doesn't it? I hope not. But anyway, um, basically the real reward is getting the box sets. And the way that you get the box sets uh, is you just got to be on his mailing list. And he sends out um, he sends out his current projects and when he's going to release them. And it's kind of kind of first come, first serve. More like the most loyal, get, get the first pick. Or, you know, I, I don't want to discredit his label. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's first come, first serve. Um, but you got to be in his good graces. You really do because he has the fan base as far as the label goes that all he needs. I mean, he doesn't want for anything as far as selling them. Um, you know, so when you go to him and ask him to be on his subscriber list, yeah, he'll put you on there. But believe me, kind of like myself, um, I learned, you know, I contacted him, got on his list, and then, like, two weeks later, I noticed that he did a release. And I'm like, what's up with this? You know, um, I didn't know about it. So I just kept contacting him. I ended up actually purchasing um, one of those limited purchases, which I will show you in a minute. And and, and from then on, I, I like, it was a wealth of information opened up to me. I started receiving, like, very, very special emails from him you know a mass email though but it was way more informative than what i had been receiving before kind of get it has private links with detailed pictures of his box sets his box sets on his 
uh, Kibiko label are to die for, and they are expensive, mainly because every last one of them are different. This guy pays so much attention to detail in his releases, and that's what it's about. His Kibiko label is about colored vinyl, special releases, inserts, things of that nature. And when I say inserts, if it's um, some jazz or some free jazz or noise and experimental music from an Asian um, musician, he goes and finds ancient wood that the Asians or Chinese or whatever Asian culture used to use in their paper, and he puts the liner notes on that ancient paper that he gets from private advocacies that he purchased them from. So it's like he spares no expense. Um, but in the regular releases, you still get the thick vinyl. What's up, man? I don't I don't want you to have too many of those him. Um he still still gets this you still get the special releases. Um, but it's like the color vinyl. Now, he has now since let hey, come on. Go lay down. He is now um He's now started a new label. His new project is Sagittarius A Star, more total geared towards free jazz, experimental jazz, um, and tribal jazz, spiritual jazz, if I said that already, I don't know. Um, and it is to die for. Derek, um, I think you would be interested in Sagittarius and Cubicle or Cubicle uh, the label because I noticed I I know that you did a um, when Conrad Schlitzner or Schlitzner Lur died. You made a video. Well, Emmanuel was very, very, very good friends with Conrad. Um, and actually, um, you know, you guys, I know I, I have to do this talking to get out of the way to set you up. But basically, um, when Conrad died, um, you know, or I'm sorry, when Conrad was alive, Emmanuel released numerous, some dope ass picture disc releases on uh cubicle and um on Sagittarius a star Sagittarius a star I want to say it's number six his sixth one which that label just started last year so far there's 20 releases number six was a Conrad's unreleased soundtrack to an underground film called slow motion exactly so Conrad gives those to him, but since then, um, last month, uh, Emmanuel sent out an uh, email, and I'm going to read y'all some of it to show you how fucked up this politics, and this is the business side of what Derek is talking about, um, of music. This is the business side that he, that, that just gives him um, a bad taste in his mouth, because I'm going to read you guys this email that he sent out about Conrad's family, and when... Um, you know, Conrad passed away. The name, the um, he titled this email "Sad News but Great News," and I'm not going to read you the whole thing because it's pretty long. I have it on my phone because I don't feel like hooking my computer up to the internet. Uh, you can't see that, but anyway, it says um, maybe some of you already know that I had planned next on Sagittarius to star a five LP box by Conrad Schlitzler, um, the transmitting cassette box. Well, unfortunately, I'll not do it. Um, the brief story is, Khan sent me the hard disk full of transmitting music back at the end of 2010. After lots of work, I compiled, select, and sent him my proposal, and he gave me the green light. So, basically, I'm going to he attached an email from his um, family. His family sent Emmanuel an email um, about this project of Conrad's that he was going to move forward with, even though Conrad had passed. It's the email, this is the email from his family. It says, we had a company meeting right now, and we're talking about your planned transmit transmitter box. We also uh, read again the email that Conrad sent you before he passed away. He clearly said that if you release something, you have to clear it up with us. We never thought you would bring out such a big project like the transmitter box, without our prior agreement. We know how Conrad managed things. In a short email saying go was enough. But since uh, we administrate or administered Conrad's music, we cannot continue 
his way of dealing with releases. We gave the release rights for the transmitter box to another label. Uh, there's a written agreement about quantity, royalties, copyrights, etc. The label will pay an advance and will promote Conrad's music in a way you would not be able to do. And it goes on and on, and it's very rude, and I think that that's fucked up. Because Sagittarius a Star label is dope as fuck. So let me get right into it. Um, it's been 10 minutes already. Can, have you guys really watched all 10 minutes of this? Um, 10 minutes already. Let me show you my Sagittarius a Star releases. The first one, <laughs> give you an idea what I'm talking about. This is Sun Ra. And then all of them have the Sagittarius guy on the back shooting at the star. What's special about these releases is that they're all of them are 200. He makes 200 of each. The first 26 are all different and limited and hand numbered by him. And it's 26 because, as we all know, Sagittarius is 26 degrees from the center of our solar system. This guy, in everything he does, He's astrological. He's uh, it encompasses Egyptian mythology and just philosophy. And so this is his con. This is uh for the first twenty six. One of these would actually be the original painting. Um, that's the Sun Ra, plain black label, but in the dead wax is uh, Sagittarius a star and the number written etched in. And this is. This is the um, insert that came with it. Sun Ra and his ethnical stru ethnic structural cosmo orchestra live at Red Creek, Rochester, New York, um, August 11th, 1986. This is dope as fuck. And I'm going to put this on real quick while I show some of my other um, Sagittarius Star LPs. Give you guys a good idea. Now, the way that you get 1 through 26 is you have to be on his email list. Um, and, you know, up until this point, up until recently, I wasn't able to get any of the 1 through 26. Because first, the collectors don't let them go. I've only seen one for sale on eBay. And two, they're all so damn unique. It's crazy. So, this one is actually pretty good because at the end, Towards the end of the first song on side one, it has like a nuclear war type call and answer Sun Ra uh, song on it. And I'll let you hear that. I'll let you guys hear that. Let me see if I can find it. Now, I hope I'm not competing with this. I hope that this turns out good so you guys can hear me. Sun Ra, Sagittarius the star. So let me move on, and I unblake these so I can save time. Uh, it looks like I might be getting a little bit of lag, but I'm just gonna kill them. This is the BMC trio. Live in Poland. This is Sagittarius the star guy. Turn this down. This is on 180 gram. Now, two LPs. This is the first one, just side A, side B. And then the second one, check that out. This shit is just so fucking unique, man. And it's just... I mean, I love this label. And and I have more coming, and, and I have more to share, but I had to get this out there right now. This is the Saron Sextet. If you guys can see that. Sagittarius the Star. This is... I'm not sure what number this one is. This has an insert as well. Some of these inserts are handmade, handwritten. This one isn't, but this is the Saron Sextet live in Berlin. This actually is an older recording that he must have bought. Um, this is from 1987. You hear uh, Sun Ra? 
Saturn rings, rings upon Saturn. <laughs> it's just so dope, man. Like this, this stuff is awesome. And I'm, I'm gonna hardly any of Sagittarius Star recordings are posted on YouTube, so I'm gonna put some of that stuff up there. This is the, uh, I think this is the truth of uh, in the first 1 through 26, the 1 through 26, this is actually pasted on. Here's Sagittarius the star again. Let me turn this down, man. I feel like I'm competing with that. This is the Truffula Trio. The information about it. As you can see, that's that was handwritten and been copied. It says, uh, recorded at Mom Studios at Balavanshuk. For I can't read that. 2010. In the original 1 through 26, this actual graphic is in color on the front. Um, and I think the inserts are actually original works of art as well as photos from the recording uh, session. If you go on Discogs, each one of these are pretty well documented as far as what the limited editions come with. You should check it out. This is Pink Luminous Invocation. This is straight experimental noise. Uh, Derek, this is another release date. I'm, I'm sure you would, you would just fucking love the hell out of this one. You would. I mean, oh yeah, this has an insert too. Written and performed by Pink Luminous Invocation. Um, uh, recorded at Literary Hannes, Copenhagen, if I said that right, 9-13-2006. Look at that answer. This shit is so dope. And then check this out. I'm pretty sure, um, Chris Astro Traveler could appreciate this. This is a Roy Brooks release. On Sagittarius the Star. All of this stuff came out last year. And this has an insert. This has a color insert. Roy Brooks and the improv improvisational sphere. Um, it doesn't give a date on this one. This is actually just like a playbill or, you know, the actual um, flyer for the concert. And so those right there are just my regular Sagittarius Star LP releases. And then um, I told you that I was able to get my hands on a 1 through 26, and it actually came in form of a box set. And both times that I've been able to lock down a 1 through 26 Sagittarius Star release, I've been number 25. So like I said, it was because it was from me purchasing this. It opened up that whole new email chain that I told you I, I was on. Um, they're not cheap, but believe me, they're so collectible that now I think these Sagittarius the Star box releases and the Cubicle releases, those box sets go for like $900. I didn't pay anywhere close to that, but, you know, I paid, paid a good price for this. And, you know, I don't, I don't think he really always has a set price in mind, but this is, um, let me see if I can say his name right. Farouk, Farouk Z. Bay, uh, saxophonist, um, still alive. These are all current recordings. And this this is the box. It, it's kind of like a glorified album mailer. You see Sagittarius on the back, but check this out. 25 to 26. 25 to 26. And... There is some special shit in this box. Not as special as some of the uh, other releases, but the one that I have coming to me by the end of March is fucking unbelievable. It's going to blow you guys' socks off. I have already know what it looks like. He made 25 of them, and basically he sent an email to us, and he told us to pick out the ones, he and he'll try to accommodate. And the first one that I picked out, which is the one I like the most, he said that I am actually able to get. And I'll share that with you guys once it comes. But this box comes with um, four LPs in it. And actually, the four LPs are the three. Three of them are the ones that have come out this year in 2012. You have this one, uh, Synchron. This is uh, Farouk Zibay on the sax. 
Ron English on the guitar, Keith Vreeland on the piano and keyboard. I think that is the guy from uh, who did the recording on Strata on the Strata uh, record label. John Dana acoustic and electric bass, and Leonard King on drums. This shit right here is. I gotta throw this on so you guys can hear this. Um, I'm at 20 minutes. I'm trying. I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna go by past. 20 I'm gonna try to make this 25 minutes. Let me just throw this on so you guys can hear this man And while I give y'all the first like 30 seconds of that and then I'll start explaining the other ones All right, so let me turn that way down. Um, and it, as you can see, the ones that don't come in the box set don't have that. And you see that little asterisk? Well, Emmanuel documents his 1 through 26 releases in his box sets with this on the inner lip he puts he 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 marks them there's a method to his madness i just don't know how he does it um show you guys and that is SAS 18 and so here's 19 this is for uh Pharaoh i'm sorry Pharaoh uh Z Bay and the Northwood improvisers Primal Waters, that and this is not. This cover is completely different from the one from the 27 through 200 release. Check that out. I don't even know if you guys can see that the, all the different colors in there, but let me show you something. This fucking blew my mind when I saw this. Get a close up. Each one of those characters that you see are hand drawn. You may not be able to make it out. And some type of wax pencil. Every last thing that you see on here that's filling up space is hand drawn. Fucking amazing, man. This is what the back looks like. He has the label. Um, and then, of course, in this corner, he has Sagittarius to start with that star. And on the inner lip of this one, he has that. Now this came also with our original photograph. See that? Of the recording session. And on the back, handwritten, handwritten in it looks like some type of wax pencil. You have this. Handwritten, y'all. This 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 label, Emmanuel is so gangster with his releases. Especially that next one I'm gonna get you. I can't let the cat out of the bag on that one. And then another one, the extra one that's special, is uh this. Now this is not accounted for in this August, but this came in my box set, and I read that each one on his website, each one of these labels comes with a different hand-drawn design. Um, kind of like this Obi strip. Um, and this is another Feral Z Bay, and this is a tribute to Gilmore, I think. I could be wrong about that, but, I mean, this is just a dope label, you guys. And I'm coming up on 25 minutes, but I have one more LP to show you. And that is, uh, this, uh, cubicle. This is mine, Derek. This is, uh... Neo Carmo Juclo Experience Peaceful Message. This is the this is a gatefold. It has this awesome graphic in it. 
and uh, there it is on the back. So what I'm gonna do, this is not 180 gram, but you know, has the inner sleeve, that's side B, that's side A. And I'm gonna throw this on for you guys for about, I don't know, well, I'll give you about 20 seconds. And this is, give you guys about 20 seconds of what this sounds like. This is dope, tribal, sound and jazz. Um, there's another label that's that's similar to this as far as the music that they're putting out called Troglo Sound. Uh, I don't have anything off of them, but I will very soon. This is the Neo Karma Juclo Experience. Peaceful message. And the name of this song is Cosmic Balance. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, peace to everybody. And I'm going to make another video while I'm here. Um, I haven't moved yet, but I had to come here and do this post so I could do the needle drops for you guys. Um, so there you have it. <sighs> Hammond says bye. Say bye, Ham. See you later, guys. Hey, guys, real quick. Um, I was so damn excited to make my video that I realized I forgot one that was actually in this box set. My uh, feral box set, and that's this one. It's another one that came in there. I said four came in there, and there, there, there's the fourth one. I haven't even listened to this one yet, but um, I, I just had to share that. Um, this is a pasted on cover, of course, of some original artwork. I didn't get any original artwork in my box set, but that's okay. But this is Sagittarius of Star 20, uh, for Oak Sea Bay, um, live at the Detroit Art Space, uh, May 1st, 2004. So... That completes my Sagittarius of Star releases for now. I have pretty much the rest of the releases coming to me, um, including that Conrad uh, Schlitzler uh, release, the slow motion soundtrack, the unreleased underground mu movie soundtrack. It's coming. Take care, guys.